Shalom, beloved. A word. Yah of our ancestors, Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you this morning asking for a blessing, Father. Give us understanding. Make us know that thy will is being done in our lives. Even if we do not understand, and let us glorify and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and thank you this morning, as I open our eyes that we might see and understand. We ask that this word that we learn this day be revealed according to thy will, and that we give you praise continually. And bless your name, Father, for thou art worthy to be praised. Thy mercy is everlasting. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, giving honor to the Ruach HaKadosh, O blessed Father, most high above all things, all gods, all people, thou art God alone. We praise, honor, and glorify you as we receive your word this morning. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we give you thanks, praise, and glory. Amen. We're going to start, beloved, in the book of Matthew. There are people who are having experiences and they don't understand why. But there's an answer, beloved, so that you might see. There is an answer today. Book of Matthew, chapter 5. Starting at the ninth verse. Blessed are ye, the peacemakers, for ye shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Book of Matthew, reading from Chapter 5, from the ninth verse to the twelfth. Thou art blessed, beloved. Now, we're going to go into 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 4. Chapter 1, 1 Peter, chapter 4, starting at the twelfth verse. 1 Peter, chapter 4, starting at the twelfth verse. Beloved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Yeshua Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Yes, beloved. Think it not strange. Think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Many of you, beloved, are amidst your trials. You're on. The threshing floor, beloved. The threshing floor. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. First Peter, we're in chapter 4. Going back to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. We're at the 11th, 
10th verse. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Yeshua is talking. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Many of you beloved. You are on the threshing floor, the threshing floor. The threshing floor is a hard surface. When they gather the wheat from the field, they lay it down in bundles on the threshing floor. And normally they take animals in the old ancient days before the mechanized machinery. They would lay it down on a hard stone surface or the hard earth and they would get oxen and heavy animals to stomp over it or they beat it down hard to separate the wheat from the husk. They would, it would go through a transition to separate that grain from the husk. And they called it the threshing floor. The threshing floor. Many of you, beloved, are on the threshing floor. You're going through a trial. And you don't understand why. But the threshing floor is a separating. There's a separation that occurred on the threshing floor. He separates the wheat from the chaff. The wheat from the chafe, from the husk, the threshing floor, the heavy grain of wheat fall to the ground and it separates from the stalk. Many of us, when we're going through the threshing floor process, there are many trials that come upon us with hard pressed, just like the oxen that would Stamp down the wheat, separating it from the stalk, separating it from that which once supported it. It's a hard trial. It's pressing. And it's something you cannot avoid, though try you may. All right? It talks about the threshing floor. When we look, I'm going to go into the book, First Chronicles, and we find David. After David had taken a census that he should not have taken, 70,000 Israelites were killed. And one angel, and when the angel stopped, he was standing between heaven and earth over by the threshing floor of Ornan, of Ornan. And Ornan had been threshing wheat at that threshing floor, separating the grain from the stalk, the grain from the stalk that had supported it. Many of us in our lives, we have become dependent on people, on situations that no longer serve us in our walk, in our growth period. So there's a separation going on. And a lot of us don't understand it. And we're hard pressed, we're hard pressed, beaten down by the situation. We're separating the grain from the stalk that supports it because the stalk no longer serves the purpose of that wheat. If the wheat stays on the stalk too long, it will become dry and of no use. 
It's a separation. Many of us, we have people in our lives, family, friends, men, women, sometimes our own children, supporting us in some fashion. We use them as a support. But he's doing a separation. The wheat, the grain is being separated from that stalk. And in order to do it, we are hard pressed, beaten down to get that grain to loose from that stalk. Onan was on the threshing floor. And the angel of the Lord had came because of the sin of King David. The angel was holding up his sword over the threshing floor of Ornan. And the Lord commanded the angel, we're in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 27. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into the sheath the host holding. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of Ornan, in the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of the burnt offering were at that season in the high place in Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of the Lord, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offerings for Israel. David bought that threshing floor from Ornan, the threshing floor where the wheat had been threshed, where that angel that had destroyed over 70,000 people stood and he made a prayer there and the Lord held back that angel. That same place would become where the altar would be built for burnt sacrifices. That would be the place where the temple that Solomon would build would be structured. And that place, that threshing floor, was going to be the altar for burnt offerings. The threshing floor. What does that threshing floor signify, beloved? You see, two things happen at the threshing floor. First, the grain is laid on the ground. The wheat, while it's on the stalk, is laid on the ground. It's beaten down and it's trampled underfoot by animals to separate the wheat from the stalk, from that which supports it. There's a separation going on in your life. There's a fiery trial on you, and you don't understand why it's a separation, beloved. And in that separation, in the midst of it, One of the other things he does, beloved, once the wheat separates from the stalk, that threshing, then comes the winnowing process. The winnowing process. We read in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 12, he's speaking about Yeshua whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. What floor? The threshing floor. And gather his wheat into the garner. He's gathering the wheat. Okay? But will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. What is the chafe? What is the chafe, beloved? What is the chafe? Winnowing is when the wheat and all that's clinging to it is thrown in the air. It's thrown in the air. And the chafe being lightweight and of no substance is 
blown away with the wind. It's carried away with the wind. The wheat having more weight, that grain falls to the ground. He's winnowing, he's throwing it up, and all the lightweight particles in the chafe are blown away and separated. It's separated from it. In order to get the grain separated from the stalk that supports it, it's stretched, it's beat down, it's trodden underfoot, it's under, a, it's hard pressed. Once that occurs, and the stalks are removed because many of us, we put our trust in people. But Yah is bringing us closer to him. He's taking away those supports. And we're going to be supported by him. We have to put our trust, our faith in Yahuwah and his word, Yeshua HaMashiach. And let the anointing of the Ruach Kakadesh, that Holy Spirit, come upon us. But those supports have to be removed. They're too influential on our lives. So he separates on the threshing floor. Once we're separated from the stars, then comes the winnowing. The winnowing. We can't be carried away by every means of doctrine of men. The words do not be carried away by every doctrine of men. That's the winnowing, the winnowing. But the chafe is carried away. The chafe, that lightweight chafe. Think of popcorn. When you eat popcorn. And that husk, that hard light husk. That we all get rid of. Chafe. Think of that as chafe. The winnowing comes. Some people are carried away by every form of doctrine of men. They like. They, they, they follow ticklers of ears. People that tell them what they want to hear. That chafe before the wind. Beloved. But you being the heavy grain, that wheat, when the winnowing comes up, the winds of change, beloved, the winds of change. Think of the winnowing as the winds of change. There are many people and many situations in your life that Yah is removing. He's removing, beloved. The winnowing process, it throws it up in the air. Some take their fan and they winnow, and that lightweight, useless particle is carried away. And when it's gathered, it's burned. The winnowing process. Some of you are in the midst of being winnowed. You're being winnowed. Certain friends, certain places, certain thoughts, certain attitudes, certain behaviors are being removed. Why? You're going through the winnowing process at the threshing floor. You've already been hard-pressed. All your supports are gone. You're thinking, isn't that enough? No, the process has to be completed, beloved. Now comes the winnowing. There are those who are carried away by every doctrine of men. During the winnowing process, those winds of change take it away. Takes it away. Beloved, understand. He's purging his floor. He's purging his floor. We will go to the book of Psalms. Psalm 1. Starting at the first verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. No, beloved. But are like the chafe which the wind driveth away. 
the ungodly are not so. But are like the chafe which the wind driveth away. The winds of change, beloved. The winds of change. He's gathering his wheat into his barn. You, beloved, are that wheat. Think it not strange, the fiery trials that come upon you. He's purging his floor. He's purging his floor, beloved. That's what he's doing. He's purging whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. Who? Yeshua HaMashiach. His fan, he's winnowing the wheat. Remains because it's heavy and steady. Mm. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. You see, that fiery trial, the chafe cannot withstand the heat. If the wind doesn't take it away, the heat of different situations will destroy it. Beloved, this is a word from the Most High. He's purging his floor. You are on that threshing floor, beloved. But what happened to that threshing floor that David was at? On it. He used it. He bought it from on it. And there they made birth sacrifices unto the Most High. There the temple was built that Solomon built. First Chronicle. Between chapter 21 and chapter 22. But you, beloved, are on the threshing floor. He's using your hard pressed. He's using that threshing floor to remove you from the stock the stalks that support you that you don't need anymore if you stay on that stalk too long you will be of no use you will dry up he has to separate you from your stalk hard pressed beaten down once the stalks are removed those supports you no longer need they hold you back you hold too long that which supported you once will come bring your destruction. Then comes the winnowing process. The winnowing. Everything that's on that floor has to be purged. He's after the grain of wheat below. But the chafe is down there. And things that are of no use. So he throws it in the air with his fan. They throw it. They toss it in the air. The winnowing process. The grain of wheat having weight, that weight of the word, that weight of the spirit. When it's thrown up, the weight will bring it back down. But that chafe that is of no use, it will be carried away. What did his word say? Don't be carried away by every doctrine of men. He's winnowing his floor, beloved. Yeah. So when people leave your life, when the winds of change come and you don't understand, he's winnowing. We are in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 12, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. Think it not strange, beloved. Think it not strange. Think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. You're on the threshing floor, beloved. You're on the threshing floor. But rejoice. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, happy are ye. Mm, you're on the 
threshing floor, those pressing situations trying to beat you down. Mm. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. You're on the threshing floor below. And to finish, we're going back to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Starting at the 10th verse. Blessed are they which are persecuted, threshing floor, for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, the winnowing process, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The winnowing process. Winnowing process. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. When the winnowing comes, it's the winds of change. Think it not strange, beloved. You're on the threshing floor. He's gathering the wheat into his barn. Getting rid of the stalk during the threshing process and removing the chafe and all those unnecessary things during the winnowing process. Those who are carried away by the doctrine of men. But you have that weighty, powerful, true word of the Most High. May this word be received according to the manner that the Most High gave it, as it was spoken by Yeshua HaMashiach. May the spirit of the Most High, the Ruach HaKadkadesh, anoint the listener, that it may be received as the Father intended. Let thy will be done, not our will, but thy will. And Father, leave a blessing behind. We ask this morning for thy mercy. We ask that thou forgiveth the sins of our ancestors and our sin. And come, Father, hear the house of Yasharel and all those who seek thee truly, Father. We ask you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, believing and receiving from you in giving all praise, all honor, all glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hear from on high, Father. Amen. Shalom.